Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's uh, Nicola Rossetto from Florence. Today we have uh, a very frank debate about uh, operation of the electricity system in Europe, about uh, cooperation of uh, system operators uh, in Europe. And today we have the fortune to have with us Jean-Francois Gahungu from uh, Corazon, one of the main speaker uh, during the seminar we just had. And so I would like to ask you, uh, Mr. Gahungu, what is it, Corazon? Why is it so important uh, in the development of the European transmission system for electricity? Well, thank you for uh, questioning um, me regarding Corezo. Corezo is a company which was founded in 2008 by two companies, two TSOs, Elea from Belgium and RTE from France. The main purpose of Corezo at the very beginning was to find a way to coordinate or to cooperate between the two countries, between the two TSOs regarding security of supply. It was one of the key lessons of the event of the 4th of November 2006. Uh, lack of coordination, it is necessary to anticipate, it is necessary to have a more larger view um, on the grid. Then, day after day, years after years, some other TSOs joined Corezo with always a purpose to find a way to better coordinate themselves. For instance, we are here in Italy, when Terna uh, joined Corezo, the main idea was how can we manage, how can we better organize a way to operate the grid between France and Italy, Switzerland and Italy, Austria and Italy and Slovenia and Italy, taking into account the fact that Italy needs to import some energy, but you have also to take into account the fact that you have some contingencies on the French or Austrian or Switzerland uh, grid. So the main idea of Corezo is to provide coordination service. Now Corezo is one of the regional security coordinator. We are providing five mandat mandatory services coordinated security analysis, merging of the data, but we have also to innovate and propose other services to enhance the way to operate the grid. For instance, uh, and I mentioned it during the seminar, uh, the net position forecast. We take into account the story mm. of the grid, the way the flows are going from one TSO to the other, and we try to create a concept, an algorithm, which will give us the right information regarding the way the flows will be the day after. Regarding the proposals we are doing, we are not uh, controlling, we are only providing recommendations, and those recommendations are provided, taking into account the knowledge from TSOs, mm. sharing this knowledge, and identifying the, the best way to operate the grid, taking into account the needs of each TSO, but also taking into account the global situation of the grids. Yeah, because uh, grids uh, in Europe nowadays, they are very interdependent, since they are interconnected in many points, since uh, trade of energy is taking place more and more cross-border, since there are other ch new challenges like the intermittent uh, uh, renewables, uh, each, the situation in each grid depends heavily on what uh, is actually happening in other grids. And actually, you can solve problems better if you have a, a look uh, not only at your system, but also at the neighboring one. So Corazo is the result of this progressive improvement of uh, cooperation among TSOs at the European level. But how do you see it uh, now? Are we going to improve uh, again and again in the near future. I, I said that recently you signed an agreement with uh, another RSC in Europe, TSC. Uh, why did you sign that agreement? We signed an agreement, a partnership with TSCNet because the way to enhance uh, the cooperation is to develop some new tools, some new concepts, and to take into account what is the particular situation in different grids. You have to know that this is not the choice of Corezo or uh, the direction which is given by Corezo. This is the global TSO community which is trying to enhance. And you have to take into account that each grid, like mm. each country, has its own history. And you have to take into account that each grid is different. Each country has different uh, contingencies. The distribution system operators are also different. Mm. The way forward is now to find a way to discuss with TSCNet and to identify clever way to 
cooperate. I mean that, for instance, when we are developing new algorithm, for instance, to optimize remedial actions, the question is, we need some experts to develop a concept, the algorithm, it got some money. And we have some ideas, but maybe our ideas are not the best. Yeah. So the global idea is, let's confront our ideas on TSCnet side and Coreso side, let's put together our experts, let's organize a debate with the TSOs, and the result of this is some concept, the best concept, and then a tool, a methodology with, which is shared among the TSOs. And at the end, and this is our goal, the possibility to create a tool, for instance, which could be used on the North Italian border, mm -hmm. and then with some adaptation it could be used between France and Spain, or between Netherlands, Germany and uh, Belgium. The global idea is, let's think global. Not mm -hmm. only Corizo, but Corizo, TSCnet, and the older RSCs. We have to work together, we have to cooperate together. So, having Europe as the reference point, so we have to share knowledge among uh, Europeans. And, well, Europeans, I think this concept and the concept of solidarity that is uh, inevitably behind the concept of a, a never closer union was definitely on the top of the agenda last January when Europe uh, witnessed a tough uh, uh, moment, uh, at least from the electrical point of view. What's your view for, as an insider? What happened in January? Uh, the first thing is all began before January. When we received the first alert coming from one of our shareholders from RTE in France and then from Elia, we maybe have to face some issues in February or in January. Uh, it was October. In October, and it is one of the key lessons for any event, we have to anticipate. Mm. In October and on November, we organized some workshops, not only with our shareholders, but also with other TSOs, in order to identify what could be the consequence in case of. And we identify some scenarios, some adequacy issue scenarios, plus some other events such as storm and so on. Mm. Uh, with those scenarios and then with uh, some intelligence, we identify some possible processes. Yeah. We created those processes with the TSOs, we proposed to them some possibilities in terms of PS, uh, coordination, I will not go into the details, uh, in terms, for instance, of increasing the capacities between the countries, some innovative way, for instance, to increase the capacity between Switzerland and France, taking into account the characteristic of the grid. Mm. It means that in December, the whole a bunch of extraordinary processes were defined. Okay. Then, when we enter in January, we launch the use of a prototype, which is developed by Corizo, a okay. uh, short and medium term adequacy prototype, which is a tool which allows us to see the risk one week ahead. We feed the prototype with load forecast, generation schedule, and other information, and then each Friday, one week before, yes. we were able to raise a red flag and tell to all the TSOs, the neighboring TSOs around France and Belgium, and it means all the TSOs are now shareholders, it means that cooperation with TSCnet was absolutely necessary. We raised the red flag and identified the fact that within one week, something would happen. Mm. And then it was the triggering elements to organize coordination. For instance, to cancel some outages, mm. to modify the topology of the grid, to check what could be uh, the actions to be tackled in order to increase the capacities. Mm. And then, day, uh, in D minus two, I mean two days before, yes. and then one day before, if the conditions were uh, confirmed, it was able then to launch everything. It was not an easy task, as you can imagine, a lot of stress between the TSOs and the RSCs. Uh, the absolutely necessity to have a daily or a multiple intraday uh, conference. But it was really the illustration of solidarity, of creating a common understanding 
on what could happen and we have to do it together in order to solve the situation. Yeah, so I would say a good example of how Europeans can uh, overcome their historical uh, division in countries, in nations, and cooperate for the common good. And also they can innovate and find new solutions, also new technologies, new algorithms in businesses that apparently are very old, but they need constantly to update you know, new challenges. So, well, Mr. Naungu, I do thank you for your interview and for being with us, to the, to you, with you, with us today. Thank you for your questions. It was a pleasure. Thank you.